guys, welcome back to Max Reaction. How are you doing today on this Saturday? I know you're doing good. I know it. Because you're going to hit that like button. Tell me so. Anyway, we're going to react to the film theorist. Film theory, don't hug me. I'm scared. Decoded. And I ain't going to lie. When I reacted to don't hug me and seen it for the very first time, all six of them, it did scare me. There's a lot of psychotic uh, stuff going on there that I'm not really sure really why it's going on. And um, hopefully this decoded film theory video will explain to me because it's beyond my mind of what was going on. It was, it's just crazy. I don't know if you ever uh, watched Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. You should check it out if you want to be a little terrified. But let's go ahead and watch film theory. Let's see how he decodes it. Let's try to understand the videos, but I'm not sure if we still will be able to, even if he decodes it. Let's check it out. Let's react. Let's talk about it afterwards. What's your favorite idea? Oh, they're creepy. Creative. Oh yeah? Well, mine is unraveling the mysteries of insane viral videos. <laughs> oh, I like that intro. <laughs> Hello, Internet. This warps now, your mind, man. Film theory, the YouTube version of your uncle who thinks that everything is a conspiracy. Because it is. Yes. X Files. Oh, I do think it's strange that you never see a baby pigeon, and I'm definitely interested to hear your theory about the government's involvement in that. Please tell me more. And it's that kind okay. of insanity and analysis that brings us to today's topic: the independent internet darling. Don't hug me. I'm scared. Oh no. You're unfamiliar with I'm kind of scared, CMIS. guys. It's a series of short films with puppets that looks to be inspired by shows like Sesame Street. But hold on, they're all you neglectful. Starts out all happy. Off of YouTube videos. If any of you are looking it up right now to show your children, you're probably gonna want to let me finish this sentence because each of yeah, don't want to show your children. I ain't gonna lie. Do not. Show, like he's telling you, do not, do not show. Don't even show yourself because it scarred my mind. It made my mind hurt. Like I reacted to the first five, and it took me a few months to react to the sixth one because my mind was absolutely hurting after I watched "Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared." Seriously, guys. Of "Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared" features a bit of a dark turn towards a lot of dark like turns. And crafts with a real heart, or a giant can eating a duck alive. Oh yeah, you're in that part of YouTube. Scarred. But even though Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared is genuinely one of the weirdest things I've watched on YouTube. Me too. I really like it. It's really, really well done, and you should absolutely watch it. At it it is well done, season, but it's, it's all about it's scarcity. Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared's creators, Becky Sloan and Joseph Helling, huh. pretty much started this from scratch on the site. The first episode came out only three months after I uploaded my first ever episode of Game That's Game. cool. It's a long time ago. Yeah, so it I is. I feel like we have a kindred history here. But also I like it because this show <coughs> Categorized. It's got puppets, but it also has animation in a lot of different styles. And then, if you wait long enough, it also has some live action sequences. All of these different it's styles really dark, are though. The things that makes it really hard to interpret. Explain. These videos aren't interested in playing by anybody else's rules. Not at all. That makes it really exciting to watch. But last, and probably most importantly, is the amazing attention to detail these videos have. The number of callbacks and Easter eggs in every episode is astounding. Some of them you have to practically watch. Frame by frame to even see. And oh, I didn't see that one. Kind of stuff that makes me oh my gosh. Tons of other theorists out there really excited. There are a <laughs> lot of different ways to interpret Don't Hug Me, but today for our first Let's theory, break it down. That's right. I said first, more on that later. We're going to talk about what the whole thing means. An overview of the main themes of the whole series. Granted, we're not the first people to try and do this. YouTube and Reddit were flooded with theories when the last episode went up. But I really tried to do my homework on this one, and I got an explanation. I trust you, Gabe. That'll convince even the most theory. skeptical of theorists. Be warned, comprehensive spoilers <coughs> lie ahead. But then again, Seen them all. the entire thing is on YouTube, and it's just six episodes that are between three and eight minutes each. So just go watch it, like right now. Anyway, you all yeah, ready? Before you watch Fantastic. this, watch it. Creative. If we're hoping to explain what's going on in Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared, we first need to establish what kind of world we're in. A lot of theories look at the bizarre events in this series as evidence <laughs> It's gross. Things, such as the three main characters, to whom I'll be referring to from here on out as the red guy, the yellow guy, and red, the duck. Red, yellow, and duck. Purgatory or some sort of nightmare. To that I say, Occam's Razor, my friend. I think it's that a nightmare. Is one that's a lot simpler. These 
three are just stars of a children's television show. Granted, it may not be a very nice children's television show, but the evidence is there. There are several Husk. instances in which we see the inner workings of a television show. We see they the teach you, yeah. Cameras right in episode one at the start of the creativity montage. Then again, in episode four, when the red guy follows the computer wire to the next room, and in episode six, as the lamp explains dreaming to the yellow guy, you can also tell that most of the time, these characters are on set. This is most obvious when Duck revolts in episode 5, saying, <laughs> The perspective of the video <laughs> Indicating that Duck has hit the camera that's filming him. And I do that sometimes in my reactions. The aren't actually in a house with a ceiling, but in a studio with lights overhead. The okay. The obvious tip-off is that our three main characters are basically archetypes of... see where you're going with this. Street. The yellow guy is a human puppet, like Bird or Ernie. The duck is an animal puppet, like Snuffleupagus or Big Bird. And the red guy is some sort of humanoid monster, like a Grover or Oscar the Grouch. Or those aliens that go... I can see all this. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, those things utterly freaked me out, by the way. And right. If this isn't a crazy. TV show, it would explain some of the Easter eggs we keep seeing in later episodes. As Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared progresses, we start to see some of the same props appearing over and over again. At the beginning of episode four, we can see a statue of Malcolm from the previous episode yep. of the fireplace next to the clock. At the start of episode five, we see the number chart the computer uses in episode four attached to the refrigerator. That's true. I didn't see all that. Yellow baseball cap that keeps showing up. He is so thorough in breaking down and decoding these videos. It's amazing because I didn't I didn't really recognize any of that. And now that he brings it up and shows me, I can look back in my mind and be like, man, they do use the same props. Up episode after episode. These aren't just cool Easter eggs, they're there for a reason. To right. The set with props they've used before instead of having to buy entirely new props and set pieces every time. This is common not just within TV shows, but also across productions as a way to save money. There are examples of this practice all over film and TV. Like the newspaper from No Country for Old Men showing up in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And even better, oh, it did! The armor from Starship Troopers also makes an appearance in Firefly. Or Star Trek. Wow. Reusing an entire space station in two completely separate productions. There's that's amazing. One other juicy bit of Theorist Bait in episode six that strongly points to the whole thing being a TV show as well. When the yellow guy is in so the it's a TV red, show. We see a picture of the red guy who wasn't in episode five except for the credits and whose bed is empty at the start of episode six, wearing a graduation cap. Other theorists have suggested that this means that red guy is a teenager who grew up and went out to the real world, but going off to college is all. Also a way for a television show to explain the sudden absence of a main character. Right. For instance, at the end of season four of Blue's Clues, the original host Steve announces that he's leaving Blue to go off to college. When in actuality, that was just the he's show just leaving. Transitioning to a new host. Right. Let Steve go and do whatever weird artsy films that he's working on now. And no internet, he did not go off and die of a heroin overdose. <laughs> just like three years ago. They that think he died. Man, you guys are dark. Come on, people on the internet. Spread rumors. Dies in a vat of oil, and another gets his intestines ripped out. So maybe he's a serial killer. All right, great. Don't hug me. I'm scared. It's a kids TV show. Awesome. But what does it mean? What the heck are the makers of the show trying to say? Well, the first part of this is fairly obvious. Television messages that are delivered to children are corrupting them as much as they're helping them. Those episodes of Sesame Street. That's true. Oh yeah, leading your kids down a dark path of brainwashing destruction. Bird. Shame on you, Big Bird. You don't think so? Just look at each episode. The pattern here is pretty clear. Each one has a theme you'd expect to see on a show like Sesame Street. Creativity, how time works, love, right. technology, computers, healthy eating. So it's a TV show. We're portraying. That message gets corrupted. And not just by teaching kids stuff. Catching your dad watching porn or a human heart covered in glitter. Let's take it episode by episode. Episode one is all about the virtues of creativity, except it portrays certain types of creativity as being right and wrong. Claiming that green isn't a creative color, <coughs> and that the yellow guy's picture of a clown deserves to be destroyed because it's somehow creative in the wrong way. Episode two tries to explain the concept of time, but that explanation is overly simplistic and teaches that time is important, even though kids still can't understand it from the way it's written. Time is very important. Most important time, like thing in our lives. Time. With 
weird, amazing answers like time is a clock. Besides oxygen, and without oxygen, we don't have a life. <laughs> tries to explain time scientifically, the clock yells until Yellow Guy's ears literally start to bleed. In episode three, the Yellow Guy learns about love from a butterfly. <laughs> It love gets smashed. Or little baby pigeon. It's not a pigeon. And teaches him about feelings, but then later learns that love is only okay when it's followed in a certain way, particularly as it applies to religion. Episode four is all about computers and how they can teach us a lot about the world, but at the end, simply conclude that in the digital world, people end up doing frivolous things like fashion and shopping. Bad thing. They're they also do bad things. With all these superficial things rather than the information so all these things can lead into bad things. And in episode 5, the characters are supposed to learn about how to eat healthily, but the advice of the canned and meat is confusing and contradictory. And this food pyramid is just terrifying. The food groups can eat <laughs> It is. Oh, it hurts my mind. Products are good for you and others are bad. The underlying theme here is clear. The kids show these three characters are in throughout the entirety of Don't Hook Me, I'm Scared sets out to deliver lessons about the world, but either fails miserably or succeeds in intentionally brainwashing kids to a specific point of view. But why? Why are the creators of the show so cynical about kids' programming? Are they trying to say that there's some big conspiracy? There could be! It could be! Yeah, actually, definitely seems that way. Dig a little bit deeper and there's evidence that the show's creators are railing against not just Kids TV, but the makers of Kids TV and what their goals really are. Not educating kids, but in making money. Throughout the series... Well, yeah, of course they're there to make money. Such as the very first thing you see in Don't Hug Me, a newspaper which reads... Stock flying high. high. Along with a figure that seems oh. to the value of the British pound is increasing. They're well, making fun of uh, like them making money. Background of episode four that's titled Money Win. But the most important element of this is in a very small detail. Any fan of Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared knows that each of the episodes takes place on June 19th. But what you have to look closer to see is the year. You can actually figure it out from episode one. That newspaper headline about stocks soaring right. in the UK is no accident. And it's not fiction. If you look at stock records for June 19th over the last hundred years, there's one year in particular Skyrocketed. Stock markets were hitting record highs hmm. on that date in 1955. In 1955 what TV show came out then? All over the world, including the U.S. and U.K., broke practically every record imaginable when the markets opened. And if this was good evidence in episode hmm. one, in episode two, we get our definitive proof. When the clock mentions that the past is far behind us, we see a picture of all three main characters. 1906, 55. 1906, 55. The 1906 part obviously stands for June 19th, right. since the Brits put their date before the month. With the 55 confirming year? our year, but why? Why 1955? Kid shows. Well, 1955 was actually a huge deal in British television. TV Times. Prior to 1955. Broadcasting Corporation, or BBC, held a monopoly on British television. But it was 1954 that the UK passed what became known as the Television Act, in an uh -huh. effort to bring an end to that BBC monopoly. This act led to the establishment of the first independent television called ITV, for independent TV in 1954. While the BBC is sponsored by the British government, ITV is independent, and therefore has to make its money Learning so much. advertising. Now, in interpreting this... <coughs> Other YouTube channels, most notably YouTube Explained, have covered this topic, but they've said in the context of Don't Hug Me that this was a good evolution. I see it the opposite way. Why do you see it bad? The creators of Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared would agree, and here's why. Why? This was the first time that advertising appeared in British television, marking an inflection point at which television went from a medium to communicate and entertain to, to earn to money. Thereby giving executives and advertisers as much Motives. oftentimes more power than the creators. And Britain was especially sensitive to TV advertising. I mean, in the U.S., we were already used to interrupting TV programs with ads, or not even interrupting them at all. In the U.S., it was actually standard practice at the time to bleed those regular shows into an ad. So one minute you'd be watching the Flintstones, and then all of a sudden they'd be selling you cigarettes. Oh my gosh! The Flintstones sold cigarettes? One piece of evidence that was used they brainwash us into buying stuff we don't need. 
coronation was interrupted by a commercial with a dancing monkey named J. Fred Muggs. The British considered advertisements like that embarrassing and quite frankly rude. You don't interrupt their queen with a monkey? So not right. 1955 were years that were filled with debates about when and how to allow ads onto TV. And if the behavior of Becky and Not Joe during a program, TV, okay? Any indication, the issue of ads influencing TV is a big concern of theirs. According to the newspaper The Guardian, Becky and Joe received offers from more mainstream sources to make episodes of Don't Hug Me, but turned them all down and funded the project themselves through Kickstarter. I'm Joe proud. Was quoted as saying, I'm proud of them fairly odd and have the freedom to keep doing exactly what we wanted. The implication here is clear. If Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared were made for television, it would have had to have been approved by other people. people it wouldn't have got approved. It would have been for profit or popularity, not about the message of the show. And when you look at these true. Six episodes, it's pretty clear that been changed. For a positive, good, inspirational, entertaining kids show are there, but they've been perverted by the influence of an outside force. It's Don't all about the money man it's ultimately a parable for the loss of control that artists trade off when they work on bigger screens their messages are manipulated and their morals are poisoned by others with ulterior motives and they don't get the that message out they want you i know i know i'm sorry i recognize that we're just starting to scratch the surface of this series but establishing this series as a launching point was really important for answering all the other questions that we haven't gotten a chance to touch on right who are these characters really what is the significance of june 19th what about roy hopefully there's more videos on this and what does the ending mean but don't worry we're getting to all those questions and more in just another week which means that the subscribe to me subscribe to him subscribe subscribe subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Time, remember that's just a theory a film theory, film theory. and cuts I guess it's my turn to choose a card. Let's see. Hmm. So that was an amazing uh, theory, and uh, I can see where he's come from. The evidence is there with all the scattered props, um, the the date and the time, the stock market manual. Um, it all matches, and I think that theory is a correct theory on a. Uh, what's going on here they're taking bashes at children's programming because they're there for the money they're not really there for the children and since there's commercials and stuff surrounding their uh show they gotta kind of go with what they want to portray as teaching in the shows you know what i'm saying so they can't be as free as the creators of uh don't hug me scared they turned away the money that they could have had because who knows what direction all these advertisers would have tried to push them towards. So they kept their freedom. They kept uh, the sanity that they, they wanted to bring into these videos. And uh, kind of like tease us into figuring out what the heck they mean. So that's a, that's a good theory. I love the theory. Do you agree with this theory or not agree with the theory? Do you have another theory? Comment down below. Let me know what your theory is. Anyway, I'm going to link the video down below. Check it out. Give the subscriber a lot of love. Next time you choose a reaction, choose a max reaction. Because we're best in the world, baby. Peace.